Tonight, we're taking a look back in a CBS New York original documentary, Sandy. If you can see in the distance, it's a little bit difficult. Our lights don't project that far, but that is the ocean. The ocean waves crashing onto the barrier right on the other side. I got to admit, it's the first time, professionally speaking, that I was really, really kind of fear for my life at that one point. And there was one point, a story that I'll tell you, Eddie and I, we were in the car and we're going along Ocean Avenue. And then all of a sudden, we feel something hit the Mobile 2 unit and it jarred us a little. And I was thinking that maybe it was just something from the beach or something from the boardwalk that had hit us. It was the actual water. I had never seen anything like that in my life. Cars were floating. Oh, I remember that one with the, the blinking lights. And it's just us. We were the only crew there. So there is a lot going on out here. And unfortunately, very little of it is good. We drove up and we could hear the water. It looked like... I don't know, a stream or some sort of tributary where the water would normally be rushing. It looked like water was supposed to be there. That's how much water there was. And that was Elise and Chris reporting during the height of Superstorm Sandy. Chris was live behind the wheel of Mobile 2. Elise was live at the Battery Tunnel. They join me now to look back. It's so hard to believe that it was 10 years ago this week. Yeah, yeah. tough to believe, right? I know. It is hard to, to imagine how long it's been. I will say this about that Mobile 2 unit. That was when we really first kind of introduced them. Mm -hmm. We started it the mm -hmm. year before with Irene, just as kind of a test run. And then with, with Sandy, it was incredible technology at the time because you didn't need a big satellite dish. Mm -hmm. So when the winds blew, you could actually go out there and report and as long as we had cell phone signals we were able to report live throughout that's what made the coverage in my estimation to be just so kind of cutting edge and state of the art at that time because literally and I mentioned it there when those waves from the ocean came over that boardwalk we had no lights whatsoever it was just the floodlights on the vehicle mm -hmm. and at first I was like well what the heck just hit us and then when I saw it come in front of the car I was like holy cow that was the ocean and that was one of those kind of all right time to get Inland, And then it was like a tale of two storms because you're driving parallel to the coastline. It's all the ocean water and then the boardwalk just basically being dismantled. And then you drive in and then it was massive trees that were coming down. So it was precarious, it would yeah. probably be the understatement of the year on the Jersey Shore. And then where you were, just yeah. as bad at the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel in Lower Manhattan. Yeah, so we were in, Mo we were in Lower Manhattan doing um, live shots earlier in the day because they wanted to talk about, you know, the, the storm surge and talk about the water getting rough, you know, just in Lower Manhattan, right? And uh, so as things got darker, we said, okay, let's move. And we go, okay, well, it's really kind of dark down this block. Oh, we see some lights from like a, you know, firefighters, police officers, let's go down here. And then we hear the water and we're like, what? Where's that coming we're, from? Hello, yeah. we're, what is that? And then when we look, we're like, you've got to be kidding me. And it's the, I mean, it would, there was just so much water rushing in that, you know, like I said, it's, it looked and sounded like the water should be there, but we know it shouldn't. And then, of course, significant damage. I mean, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, now the, the Hugh Carey Tunnel, has, yep. has never been compromised by water like that in its, in its long history. So yeah. that was the first time. So. And then the recovery, not only with the tunnel, how many years it took to get that back. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're still working on it a couple of years ago. And then at the Jersey Shore, that boardwalk that I was just standing on, you know, in the run up before darkness when we were on that boardwalk for hours reporting as the storm was making its way, you know, to wake up the next morning and to see, I say wake up, we got two hours at the firehouse mm -hmm. <laughs> in Spring Lake yep. uh, to get off that cod, go back outside and see miles and miles of that boardwalk just literally thrown into a blender, churned up and then spit out, um, pavement uprooted, boats everywhere. And just to go up the coastline at the Jersey Shore, we were... You know, Eddie, who was my photographer at the time, we were in this mobile two unit basically trying to get gas wherever we could, mm -hmm. uh, which was a real big problem. Yeah, and then just kind of, we were gone for three straight days, just okay. sleeping in firehouses and at police stations and to see the damage and to see what the people and the residents had to go through down there. And there's still, we talked about this this morning, there's still pockets, whether it's in Long Island, the Jersey Shore, Staten Island, that you can see that. 10 years later, they're not fully rebuilt not yet. There's still people that are still, still dealing yeah. with insurance issues and, and new regulations and mandates on how to rebuild that still haven't done it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's really, it's unfathomable in some point, the really fact is. that it's taken this long. Chris and Elise, thank you so much. You got it. Check the special tonight. It's yes, be you can it's watch the CBS fabulous. News New York original documentary, Sandy. That's tonight at 7 p.m. right here on CBS2. And you can also watch reflections from our reporters by scanning the QR code on your screen along with our coverage from a decade ago.